The world of automotive design is getting more and more weird each and every day. Every car designer is trying to outdo each other, and it's leading to stranger and stranger vehicles. You won't believe they exist, but they do. These are the most incredible vehicles that actually exist. Number 15. Trucker Snowcat Do you have a crap load of money? Do you live in a very snowy area of the world? Then look no further than the Snowcat, my friends. This vehicle was at one point in time used in the Arctic to clear small roads, but now it's a favorite toy amongst people who can actually afford such a thing. Kind of like an all-terrain vehicle, but to the max. Featuring a deep orange color, this baby gained its fame by being very useful during a many a voyage in the Arctic. First popularized in 1957, the truck then gained more traction, get it, after its photo would be taken year after year navigating brutal conditions and traversing some of the most difficult terrain in the world. The truck itself is made up of a cab, along with four separate tracks that seem almost suitable for like a tank. The fact that each track is separate allows it to climb and adapt with many different terrains. The snowcat made its comeback in recent years as people of good means began to flock out of cities and into snow-covered nature, so I suppose it would seem only natural to have a vehicle like this around to help you cruise around the property. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Now we need to talk about the Caterpillar 797. The thing's an absolute beast, a giant mining truck, and perhaps the biggest we've ever seen. Coming in at $3.4 million and powered by two V12s that are lashed together, there's no denying that this thing is powerful but also expensive. The size is kind of a problem, meaning that major concessions have to be made to compensate for it. For example, mining roads that these things operate on have to be three times the width of the vehicle. That's a very wide road. Aside from its massive engine, features also include exhaust, turbocharging systems, and integrated intakes. Simply put, this thing is seriously kitted out. But what do you think? Would you dare drive one of these bad boys? Or is it too big and too unwieldy for you? Comment down below using the hashtag sweet topic and let us know what you think in relation to what we just showed you on screen. And with that, let's keep things moving. Number 14. Dunkel Industries Luxury Ford F650 4x4 Expedition Truck Let's say you're that person who has a lot of things to take with you into the deep woods or nature. Most of the time you probably have to take an entire trailer because you need to carry all those ATVs and pieces of equipment and such. But what if you could just pack it all into your truck using a ramp and some serious horsepower under the hood? This is where the luxury Ford F650 comes into the picture. This truck eliminates the need for a trailer by condensing all of your vehicular equipment to be carried completely by the truck. Not only does it make driving on the road safer, but the cab becomes so much bigger. So much so that they have added extra comfort and amenities into the cab, like a little living space and even a shower. Part motorhome, part trailer. The Ford F650 is a necessary item for anyone who's looking to consolidate their outdoor equipment and have the spice of comfort. Imagined, then created, by Peter and Daniel Dunkel of Dunkel Industries, the truck is a heavily modified version of the base Ford F650. A well-dreamt-up truck indeed. It looks like a piece of equipment that could really bring a lot more to many people's outdoor experiences. Number 13. The Iguana X100 Finally, we've reached some boats so that we can go on some water excursions. This boat may be compact, but the power that's behind it still packs a walloping punch with twin 300 horsepower engines. 
And to navigate it, there are two tracks on the bottom of the boat to get it from land to water. While the boat may look compact at first, there's still room to support a maximum of 16 people, along with plenty of room for sunbathing, fishing, or just kicking back with some drinks and friends. The boat itself took 10 years to engineer, and because of this has reduced boating accidents from the embarking and disembarking by 80%. Because of its land capabilities, it can be kept safe from vandalism and water damage as well. No more planning and logistical crap to deal with. All you have to do is just drive up to the water, get in, and have a good time. Now with all this talk about boating, who's ready to go fishing? Number 12. The 1929 Rocket Car if you're more of a speed freak looking to satisfy the urge to go really fast, as, as fast as you possibly can, then check out this 1929 rocket car. Now, the 1920s, well, they were a veritable heyday for everything that was rocket-powered. And Austrian space travel promoter Max Valier was royalty in the science of making things go as fast as humanly and technologically possible. He made everything from rocket-powered sleds to the first rocket-powered airplane. Using research that Valier had found, inventors like Daniel D. Hungerford and his brother Floyd S. of Elmira, New York, were able to create things like this rocket car in 1929. Dubbing it Shirley Lois Moon Girl after Daniel's daughter, they made the rocket from cardboard and linoleum along with a 1921 Chevy chassis powered by a set of gasoline-burning rocket motors. It all sounds kind of dangerous if you ask me, but then again, it was only 1929, and I'm sure the word safety probably meant a lot of different things in those times. Even though the vehicle reeked of dangerous potential, the brothers were able to actually register the rocket car as a vehicle in the state of New York shortly after its completion, something that I'm pretty sure would not be possible these days. Number 11. Tree Shaker with Collector On the more practical side of things, we have a vehicle that's made to harvest loose nuts and fruits from trees along with tall bushes. Not only can it smoothly navigate between the trees, the vehicle also vibrates multiple trees in order to shake loose all of the nuts and fruit. The vibrations can get up to 40 hertz with very minimal damage to the trees themselves. The vibrations are, of course, adjustable according to spacing. And how exactly do they catch all the food that falls? Well, the truck has a funneled collector that loads into compartments for safekeeping. When used to its full potential, the truck can actually harvest anywhere between 40 to 60 trees per hour. And of course, the side over the boom has a large fixed shield in order to protect its operator. Made by a company called Multi One Corporation, the truck would be super useful for anyone that has an orchard of any kind. And I'm pretty sure that I personally wouldn't really have any use for something like this, but it would still be a really cool truck to have. And it's nice to see that the farmers have the tools that they can use to maximize their harvest. Number 10. Dutchman Truck Spades Speaking of trees, maybe you want to move some of them without spending hours and hours digging them up. You know, renting a truck, loading them, and so on. Well, then do I have the truck for you. Developed and sold by Dutchman Industries, this truck is made for the pros and can work with really any size tree that may need moving. Using the circular mechanical spade attached to the rear of the truck, you can safely dig up all of the soil and roots that surround the tree and then load it into the back. While many other smaller trucks have a spade like this as well, what makes this one special is the fact that the spade is circular, preventing unwanted damage to the tree and facilitating the replanting process. The sharpened blades on the spade also help to make the process of digging the tree up a breeze. Easy on the suspension, easy on the operator, and easy on the tree. Number 9. The Flying Car all right, here we go. One thing that most people would probably say they think of when someone talks about futuristic technology, 
a flying car. Or, you know, maybe that super awesome hoverboard from the Back to the Future movies. But still, I think I can speak for all of us that this is the one that's most wanted on anyone's list. Designed and developed by Japanese company SkyDrive, this is one of the many, quote, flying car projects around the world. What makes this model special? Well, it's that they carried out a successful but modest test flight of such a vehicle carrying one person. The vehicle looks kind of like a motorcycle with propellers and is able to fly up to two meters off the ground. Tomohiro Fukazawa is the head of SkyDrive and said that he hopes that flying the car can be made into a real life product by 2023 which is ambitious, of course. The drawback, however, of this super cool motorcycle car thing, well, once again, it's safety. Though of the many different projects that are similar to this one, only a few have been able to achieve the flight with a driver aboard. So for everyone, here's to hoping that it comes sooner rather than later. Number eight, the Krupp Raumer S German heavy mine cleaning vehicle. Now I'm sure that many of you, especially those of you who grew up in the 90s, are familiar with the mine sweeping games on Windows. It's not just a game, however. There were actually real armored vehicles that drove around minefields and detonated any remaining mines. One such truck would be developed by the Germans during World War II and was made by German engineer Krupp. Coming in at a whopping 130 tons, the truck had four wheels and traversed the terrain with a snail-like precision. Some of the prototype models had anti-aircraft and anti-tank attachments, though these never materialized because of the end of the war. After the war, however, the United States then got their hands on the plans and were able to recreate this bad boy. Now, I know I said that none of the other trucks were very practical, but it would be super awesome to have parked this in the driveway. I mean, it'd be pretty hard to screw with someone who has one of these in front of their house. Or if there were a tank, you know, because I'd love that too. A tank. <laughs> Number 7. 1958 Sir Vival. As much as we'd like to think that the 1950s in the United States was the golden age of family values and the peak of consumerist ideals, it was actually a period of time that was wrought with fear and tension because of the mounting nuclear threat from Russia. To capitalize on this fear, people were developing vehicles that could survive any kind of nuclear or biological attack. 1958's car, the Survival, is an excellent example of such a fear-based ingenuity. Designed by Walter C. Jerome of Worcester, Massachusetts, the car had a, quote, startling unorthodox two-section design and a shocking $10,000 price tag which roughly equates to about $92,000 when accounting for today and inflation. The car only fits one single driver and has a central steering system. This setup harkens to today's smart car, a boxy type compact design. Though the Sir Vival seems to be completely unnecessary and totally incomprehensible, it would still be cool to at least sit in one, though driving and controlling such a strange looking car seems to be a chore in itself. Good thing it didn't really catch on, because it would be really horrible to see these things driving around on the road. Number six, the ultra heavy lift amphibious connector. Jumping back into the military side of the vehicular world, we have an enormous boat that is supposed to be capable of transporting up to three Abrams M1A1 tanks from a ship to the shore in about 20 knots. Still in development by the United States military, the ship would first be tested during the 2014 Rim of the Pacific exercises. The boat, after making the distance from boat to shore, has treads on the bottom so that it can then embark on shore and unload the tanks onto dry land. During a presentation, the boat actually climbed out of the water and onto land for a distance of roughly 100 feet before having its tanks unloaded. The project is a joint development venture between the United States military and the military of Singapore. 
And there's really nothing like two militaries that band together to make the world just a little bit more dangerous and or safe, if you will, for everyone else who's living in it. Always good to see countries getting along for the sake of tanks and war. Though seeing such a huge piece of machinery accomplish such tasks is also impressive. Number 5. The Gigantic 1000 Horsepower Lark LX Amphibious Vehicle Keeping up with the amphibious military vehicle subject, we have another boat that's able to go from water to land. The military really needs these boats that are able to take land vehicles and transport them via a body of water, but also to have them safely and quickly become mobile on land. To facilitate this need even more, they made the Lark LX amphibious vehicle. While hovercrafts are still being perfected as the ideal mode of transitional transportation, such boats like the Lark LX are still the preferred for such tasks. This boat, unlike the last one on our list, actually has four wheels and 1,000 horsepower to get the behemoth onto shore and even deeper onto land. Designed by R.G. Letourneau, the same mad scientist behind the U.S. military's massive off-road land trains, it was, for a time, the largest wheeled amphibious vehicle ever made. First being utilized in 1957, it would see most of its action during the Vietnam campaign. After better technology was then developed, most of the boats were eventually sold off over time. The ones that remain in service, though, are still functional to this day. Number 4. The Tron Motorcycle Bike For all of you science fiction movie buffs and nerds like myself, we've been waiting for this one for a long time. 2010's Tron Legacy had a super cool light bike in it, and this did whet the appetite for many movie nerds and motorcycle enthusiasts alike. Now, you have to wait no longer, my friends, because the light bike is on its way. While a handful of engineers and companies have tried their hand at making a bike, none has come as close as the Parker Brothers concepts have. The motorcycle that they created is even street legal. Using artist Daniel Simon's design, the visionary behind the Tron light cycle, Parker Brothers Concepts, turned the actual blueprints into a fantastic reality. The earliest versions of the bike had a Suzuki 996cc V-twin engine, but were then soon replaced by an electric model known as the Xenon. The Xenon, which had two different versions, supposedly charged in three hours and achieved a top speed of 70 miles per hour. Oh, and it only costs around $55,000. That's a price that I might gladly pay to get my hands on one of these. I'm assuming the Trails of Light are not actually going to be a part of the design, though, sadly enough. Number 3. One-of-a-kind luxury motorhome. Hitting the open road for a long period of time can have its challenges. The main one, finding comfort amongst many dilapidated and unwelcoming motels and motor stops along the way. Are you planning on spending a ton of time on the road? Maybe you should consider looking into a motorhome. This motorhome, however, is really one of a kind, and boy is it luxurious. Costing an enormous 1 million Australian dollars, the Kenworth Dreamliner is a staple in the luxury motorhome market. Produced by a Queensland-based commercial truck body specialist, STG Global, it's not only luxurious, but also has a tough-of-nails body as well. With 500 horsepower and all the amenities of home, the motorhome is able to support up to six people at a time. So if you have a family, don't worry. The only thing that you should freak out about is that steep price tag. But if you do have the money for this juicy opportunity, for the sake of the rest of us, buy the thing and see the world. Just make sure to post it all on Instagram. Number 2. The M3 Amphibious Rig Yet another amphibious military vehicle. These things are impressive, but also seemingly more common than I thought. For this iteration of a boat that goes on to land, we have the M3. Developed in Germany this time and unveiled in 1993, it functions as a four-wheeled vehicle on roads and then propels itself into the water using two large aluminum pontoons that create buoyancy. The rig would be produced and developed by Eisenwerk Kaiserslassern 
hopefully I pronounced that right, which is now General Dynamics European Land Systems in Germany. The UK and German armies ordered the first batch in 1994 and was put into active service by 1996, which replaced the EWK's M2 amphibious rig, which had seen a big old 25 years of service before that. Now, I suppose the United States wasn't really in need of such a vehicle, seeing as they'd already been developing so many other similar ones on their own terms, and you've got to hand it to the Germans in the end. It appears to be very robust and capable. So maybe look into a little collaboration with the United States, Germany. Number one, an incredible 10 wheeled vehicle. Finally, and very befitting of our number one spot, is a vehicle that takes the gritty and indestructible feel of a military grade truck and combines it with the ease and intuitiveness of a consumer big wheeler. Kinda sounds like a Grand Theft Auto explanation. This baby right here features 10 whole wheels, and you can cut through traffic like a boss or cause more traffic depending on how terrible of a driver you are. Built by an Emirati Sheik, this really is an incredible 10-wheeled vehicle that's made from a combination of military truck and a Jeep in the United Arab Emirates. A Sheik with a really long name that I really can't pronounce who was based in Abu Dhabi shared some pics of his new monster truck on Instagram and had people frothing at the mouth with envy over his purchase. In one of the grandiose photos, the truck is parked next to a regular sized car for comparison. And jeez is the thing big. If you do get off into the countryside with this, there's no limit really to where you can go and what you can do. Except for flying, of course. Oh, and maybe take it into the water. However, maybe he can trick it out even more and make it amphibious. If you're watching, Mr. Sheik, you should totally consider doing that. After reading this list, I have to go and get into my small little economy car and feel satisfied. Why can't I just fly the thing or go through the water? Come on, science! Hurry up with these affordable hover cars already. We're all waiting for you. Which of these vehicles would you want parked in your driveway? Maybe not to take to work, but just be parked. Also, check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.